episode features graduate student and teaching assistant Nicole Shea. Nicole has been piloting a new model for general biology. Her work won her the award for teaching by graduate students from the Rutgers New Brunswick Graduate School. I had the opportunity to discuss her involvement in the development of the new program format. We also discussed some unique solutions to the challenge of engaging students in large introductory courses and innovative online teaching strategies. Can you tell us a little bit about where you teach at Rutgers and the course that you're teaching? Sure, I teach for the Division of Life Sciences and specifically I teach for the General Biology courses and I'm teaching in a new pilot version of the course. Traditionally, general biology is taught as a lecture and lab series, but we recently um, started a, bio a uh, pilot course, which consists of the lecture, a workshop, and then the students take a standalone lab course. Ah, and how many students are we talking about in these, in these classes? Well, the general biology series teaches about 2,000 students per semester, but with our pilot course, we do about 300 students each semester. And we're going to be scaling that up starting next year to all students. So it's obviously a very successful pilot in that case. Yes. Um, so a lot of the students that take the workshops do better, uh, about 10% better on their lecture exams than students that take the traditional model of the course. And it also improves retention in the sciences. Many of the workshop students go on to take more science classes um, versus their traditional counterparts. So uh, with the pilot then, mm -hmm. um, you've introduced something called a workshop, you mm -hmm. said. Yes. And so can you explain to us exactly what the workshop is and then how that might impact differently the lecture and the lab as well? Sure. So the workshop is very different. It's student-centered. And what this means is that the teaching assistant facilitates students' discussions in small groups about the material. We choose specific areas of the material that we want to really dig into, that we know students are going to have difficulty with. And we design um, projects for the students where they actually have to organize the material from lecture in ways that will help them remember it and learn it more effectively than what they would actually see in a lab situation where it's kind of laid out for them step by step what they need to do. In the workshop, it's a little bit more hands-on. Students actually have to work deeply with the material and make sense of it. Instead of just sitting in a lecture taking notes, mm -hmm. they're actually doing more with the material when they get to workshop. Does each TA have several workshops? That, yes. yes. Yeah, okay. we each have about three workshops, um, mm -hmm. depending on the responsibilities that are required of us. Some have only two and, and do other administrative things, mm -hmm. like supporting the online discussions that the students conduct every week. They do online discussions in addition to this. Yeah, yeah, we try to keep them going with biology all throughout the week um, because our, our hypothesis essentially is that if you just learn biology once a week or however many contact hours you have in a classroom, mm -hmm. generally that's not enough because there's so much going on in their lives. Um, they need to have a continuous uh, relationship with biology throughout the week to make this a lasting effect, even yes. beyond when they're done with the course itself. Interesting. And so because there's no scope for participation in that really large lecture, mm -hmm. that's why I guess you were thinking up the idea of the workshop, which gives the student an opportunity to have a voice and to be That's correct. Much more active. And the, you know, the learning outcomes for the workshop are based on um, the AAAS uh, standards for science education at the undergraduate level, as well as the requirements for the medical college uh, examinations. Um, and these are things that are prescriptive to those uh, curriculums. Mm -hmm. So we're, we want students to do this, these kinds of activities where they're really thinking deeply and having conversations yes. with one another and improving their, their communication skills in the sciences. We don't want them to be sitting by themselves and, and not interacting with their peers as they think about the processes of science. Um, yes, fascinating. But is there anything specific about the way you personally relate to the students? Um, anything, anything you're particularly pleased or proud about in terms of engaging the students? I've always enjoyed working with the undergraduate population at Rutgers. I think they're a very special crowd. There's um, a lot of diversity. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, brilliance among the undergraduate population. And I think a lot of it goes untapped. So I take a, the time and the effort to really get to know each one of my students by name mm -hmm. and by their strengths and even by their weaknesses so I can help them improve as individuals, but also collaboratively as teams, because it's important to develop all their strengths, just not only their personal pursuits, but also their professional pursuits as well. Yes. It's very important to support them, you know, all the way around. Yes, yeah, so thinking about this, this course that you've helped to plan, this pilot course, mm -hmm. how did you get involved in it? <laughs> 
Well, um, I started out uh, teaching the lecture lab series in the traditional model. I was a lab TA to begin, and uh, I taught that for about a year, and then I was asked to become the assistant head TA um, for Bio 102, which is the spring semester lab course. So I helped with the planning and preparation and, and TA training mm -hmm. um, for that course. And then um, there was the shift of, of bringing this pilot program mm -hmm. on board. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was actually asked to be a TA for a different course um, outside of biology. Oh. And I said no, <laughs> because I, I knew this change was coming and I really wanted uh, to be a part of it. Uh -huh. um, so I was asked to come on board and be one of the two TAs um, for the first year of the pilot course. And then we added an additional two more TAs for the second year. What drew you to teaching in the first place? Well, you know, I, um, when I was doing my master's degree in molecular genetics, I wasn't working with students at all. And it was something that I was always interested in. I always wanted to work with people, especially in terms of their understandings of science. I love talking about science and learning about science and, and talking with other people that are interested in the sciences. Um, so I was very interested in, in moving forward in that direction into education. So, I mean, was that when you were doing your master's, was that when you realized how much you really wanted to be a teacher yourself? Or did you know that earlier on? I think at my heart, I'm, I'm truly a researcher. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested in what people think and what they do and, and, and how they reason. Right. And education and teaching is a salient way to explore those things firsthand. Sure. So that's what really brought me into it. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So were there any, when you started, when you first started as a teacher, um, were there any particular really sort of challenging <laughs> situations um, that you encountered? And, and if so, you know, what did you do about that? Well, you know, um, my first year teaching, especially at Rutgers, was a little bit challenging because you're, you're encountering students from all different cultural backgrounds, all sorts mm -hmm. of ethnicities that are different from your own, and they bring different views to the table and, and different sets of beliefs. So that was a challenge. So you have to kind of yes. be very open-minded and have to be understanding. And, um, you know, Rutgers undergraduate students are, if not anything, very forgiving <laughs> oh, to people like me who are just starting mm -hmm. out teaching. So I actually had a wonderful time with my students. And, you know, sometimes you get students that are um, extremely intelligent and, and ahead of the game. And sometimes you get students who need a bit more help. So you need to kind of understand your population mm -hmm. and you need to develop your own skills of how to help those students effectively because the ones that are ahead of the game yes. need as much support just in different ways That's right. than the ones that that need to be brought up to a, a better level yes. yeah um, is there anything at the beginning at the start of the semester at the start of the whole course that you do to help students develop good study habits or know how to truly learn as opposed to Mm -hmm. you know, the memorization at the bottom of Bloom's taxonomy, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, right, exactly. So yeah. um, we do a lot of work with the students in terms of how to develop outlines of lecture material that makes sense, that are organized. Um, because what a lot of students do, especially freshmen and sophomores, is when they go to a lecture course, they take their notes and then um, for an exam, they'll just read their notes mm -hmm. over and over and over yes. again. Or they'll write them out 10 times and expect that mm -hmm. to be the method that works for them. And that does work in some cases, but not for all students. So we want to help them understand that there's other ways to learn the material. So one way to do that is through outlining. So what we do is we have them develop outlines that organize the information for them in one sheet. So a lect one whole lecture in one sheet, mm. essentially. And it gives them like a table of contents for oh, their notes. Nice. Yes. And it helps them uh, draw connections between topics so they understand the progression of the ideas that they encountered during the lecture. Once they develop an understanding of the underlying structure of the lecture, it's much easier for them to understand how pieces kind of fit together and how to draw connections between lectures. Ooh. So they can actually have several outlines from several lectures and they can see how the pieces kind of match up to one another. Now we begin the quick fire part of the program where professors answer a fun questionnaire. Professors respond with the first thing that comes to mind, letting us learn a little more about the person and his or her approach to teaching. What would you say is your favorite word? It could be a discipline-specific word or not, whatever you would prefer. Epistemology. Do you have a least favorite word, discipline or not? Lecture. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the most exciting 
part of the start of a semester for you, a new semester? What most excites you? Getting my new roster. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, learning my students' names. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is there anything that's the least exciting part of the start of the new semester? Oh, just, uh, you know, grading. Grading's always tedious. <laughs> totally. I agree with you there. What do you love to see in the classroom? I love to see the students that are very, very quiet at the beginning of the semester become fully engaged and Fabulous. conversational by the end of the semester. What might you hate to see in the classroom? <laughs> <laughs> um, cell phones? <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially when they're under the desk, right? And, they're going <laughs> yeah. and they think you don't know, right? <laughs> if you could study any other discipline than your own, what might that be? I would study law. Wow, what attracts you? I like the, um, I like uh, generating and uh, supporting arguments. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fascinating process. Mm -hmm. And I love the research that's involved for oh, cases and things like that. Is there a discipline that you would never ever want to study? Oh, anything that has to do with upper level mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. If you could attend a master class taught by anyone, whose class might you want to attend? I have to say my academic advisor, Ravi Duncan, is just, you know, phenomenal at what she does. I mean, she really spends the time and takes the effort to really shape the graduate students that she leads and um, really helps us develop our, our goals and, and our thesis projects and write papers and really takes the time to revise multiple, multiple versions of our writing. I mean, really very dedicated. And um, I see that throughout all the faculty members at the Graduate School of Education. It's, it's really phenomenal. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And that was really interesting speaking with you. Thank you for interviewing.